afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 32nd Music Festival. Our adjudicator this afternoon is Ms. Belinda Mikhail, who won the Associated Board and the Queen Mother Scholarships to study piano and singing as a joint first study at the Royal College of Music. She has a vast amount of performing experience and has been a vocal coach for participants in shows such as Dream Girls, Memphis, Rock of Ages, Chicago, Dirty Dancing, and High School Musical, and the hit TV series, Downton Abbey. She herself has been a performer of great note, both as a soloist and as a chamber mu musician. And she brings a wealth of knowledge and advice to us. Let us welcome our adjudicator, Miss Mikhail. With class JRC16, Junior Choirs, Open Mixed Voices, there are two test pieces, Mansions in the Sky by Carl Stroman and The Exodus Song by Roger Emerson. The first choir is Presentation College Mixed Choir.
thank you presentation mixed choir led by Mr. Peter Lockhart and on the piano, Mrs. Benedette Roberts. Ladies and gentlemen, competitor number two, St. Joseph's Convent Choir and St. Benedict's College Combined Choir.
choirs. Thank you, choir leaders, for your lovely work. Super to hear these voices coming together. I've heard lots of uh, girls' choirs and boys' choirs, but it's lovely when the voices come together. There's a different mix, isn't there, to the, to the blend. Um, and I hope you, know, you enjoy going to rehearsals, etc., etc., and you enjoy singing songs like this. Beautifully chosen songs as well. I don't know who chooses the repertoire, but what they gave you were, was a, a total contrast. So you had your starting song, Mansions in the Sky, um, flowing, legato, connectivity, breathing, phrasing in one. Learn to stagger the breathing. This goes to, for both choirs. Do you know what I mean by staggering the breathing? When you run out, it's fine. It, it, you're lucky in as much as you're singing in a choir, and it's okay. Just make sure you don't run out at the same time as your person standing next to you. Stagger it between you so that the phrase itself sounds as one, despite the fact that there may be little breaths going on. And um, make sure as well that you do it subtly. You don't want to sort of be seen <laughs> taking a breath in or even getting to the end of your breath. You've got to be quite subtle about it and you need to be clever about it too. You don't want to get to the end of your breath. You know what the sound, what happens to the sound when you get to the end of your breath, how it suffers, how it sounds sort of pinched and tight. <laughs> you don't ever want to get there, especially in performance. So you can sense when the breath is running out. And you can simply take it in without anything showing, no, no upheaval of body or anything. The breathing doesn't need to show in the body at all. It just doesn't need to. Um, and of course, I will say it, you didn't do it, but the one thing that absolutely isn't involved in the breathing is the shoulders, okay? The, the, there should be no movement here whatsoever. So if you find yourself that a breath, an intake of breath creates the shoulders to go up, then you need to rethink. You need to get a friend on this side and a friend on this side, keeping them down. They're just, just not connected, I can assure you. It's not physiologically, it's not connected to the voice or the breathing, okay? Um, so staggering the breathing is an important aspect of choir singing. Uh, occasionally, um, in both choirs, there were places where I felt it could have gone through a little bit more clearly. I may have heard a breath, you know, somebody taking a big deep breath. That's the other thing to say as well with choirs. The voices have to blend. Now, it was clear that there were some very, very good, very strong voices in both of these choirs. But ideally, you have to blend. So, you know, soloists need to adapt, actually, so that they're not sort of singing out and, and you know, attempting to take the show. No divas, I'm afraid. No divas allowed in choirs. You've all got to play an equal part um, and accept that. So blending of voices is an important aspect. The Exodus song, well, this was far more dramatic, far, um, far more... Grit. I've written that on one of your sheets to this song. Um, there were huge sounds needed. When you came in unison, both choirs managed it very, very well. Not an easy song at all, especially for the basses, I would say. The basses get a really tough job in this. Um, and for the most part, you manage the seconds, and some of them were minor seconds. Some of them were real clashes of semitones in there. So for the most part, it was well delivered. And, and similarly, you've got chromaticism going on in there too. Um, and a chromatic is its a real test. It's a real test of your ears. You know, can you sing a chromatic scale? I always sing chromatic scales with my students. You know what I mean by chromatic? Yeah, so descending down the scale, you know, at each note, note by note by note by note, as in every note, B, B flat, A, A flat, G, G flat, da, 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 et cetera, et cetera. Um, really good practice to be able to sing a chromatic scale, all of you, individually. Oh, and then what I make my choirs do is sing chromatic scales against each other. Can you imagine? So starting one off and then saying, okay, two, three, four, five notes later, start the next group off. That's a real, it drives them insane. But, um, but it's just excellent practice. It's excellent practice for being able to stick with your line and then accept that there's another line coming in that doesn't necessarily gel beautifully. It just is there, equally important. So I have to say, they were both really good performances today. Um, and I'll talk about each one. We had Presentation College. 
first. The opening statement was beautifully understated. I just felt it really just came out as it needed to. It led into the key change at 41 with a pleasing dynamic change. I've just written a marking about sort of aiming to take things in one breath. Um, I thought the ending was beautifully managed. Uh, there was an excellent diminuendo and your teacher just held you on and on and on. Absolutely. You practiced that, I can tell. Okay. Well, anyway, it was noted. It really worked. It does say diminuendo down to pianissimo. Um, what's the last word? I can have a look. One second. Away. Okay, away. Um, all right, it doesn't work on this, but sometimes when you get sort of endings, if it ends on an M, of course I can't think of anything that ends with an M, time, for example, a lovely way to end, to actually incorporate the diminuendos, change to the M and actually end on a hum, quiet hum. It doesn't work on away, but actually it's brought up another point um, that's on your sheet. The word is away, and you have to sing away. You cannot sing a wee. And this is your language, your beautiful language. But it's, you know, I've said it before, when it comes to singing, it, regardless, it doesn't matter what your accent is, you know, you can be a German speaker singing English, you still need to sing away. You can be an Italian speaker singing English, you still need to sing away. So it's an E sound rather than an E sound. Can you hear the difference? Yes. yes. Good, good, okay. Uh, second piece, strong dramatic opening. Um, your sound is in tune and there were rich tonal qualities. There was super diction here. Super, k, d, all together. T, really, really clear. Ha ha, again, you've worked on that. <laughs> it's not bad, is it, when I notice it? So, so it, the, and, and had, a, had it not been there, I'd have written it, you know, so bravo. Balance of voice parts working well. The harmonies were well executed. I could hear your clashes. They were secure. They were really, they were all there. Well done. And then we had St. Joseph's Convent and St. Benedict's College Combined Choir. You're here, aren't you? Yes. So your opening really evoked a gentle mood. Again, I've just marked about the phrases being sung in one breath, mansions in the sky, to a place beyond the sea. Voices, again, really rang out at the key change. You love singing sort of these unison, especially two-part sounds. You sound really superb. Um, I thought the four-part writing was occasionally not so secure, but the tone was always warm in your first piece. Lovely. Second, um, the Exodus song. This bold, gritty tone, very engaging. Um, your contrast at 20 worked very well. Also, you managed the clashes and the chromatic passages to a certain degree, but for me, there were moments where it wasn't 100% wasn't secure. You really maintained the energy. You know when you come back to, to repeat and you have a first time bar and then a second time bar, the energy absolutely shot up again. And I really thought the ending here was super, really bold and all those together notes, they were really clearly done um, and the, the chords nicely heard too. So really very, both very high um, standard of singing in both of these choirs, but for me, the choir that just took the edge with slightly more secure tuning is Presentation College. <laughs> I want to say that um, in second place with 88 marks, that's how good I thought it was, are St. Joseph's and St. Benedict's. Thank you, girls and boys, for such beautiful singing. Well done. Class JR D15, steel pan solo, 12 years and under. There are two test pieces. The tenor piece is My Dog Has Fleas by Janine Remy. And the double tenor or seconds will play The Black Anaconda by Shame Remy. Competitor number four, Anaya Amelia Chinapu.
Thank you, Anya. Number five, Caleb Rashon Fortune. Thank you, Caleb. Tion Anthony Lewis.
Thank you, Tian. Number nine, Chloe Jade Dukey. Thank you, Chloe. Rihanna Khan.
Thank you. For the final competitor in this class, Tony Eva Marie Lewis. Thank you, Tony Eva Marie. Let's say a big thank you to all of our performers. A special thank you also to their teachers and the parents who supported. Thank you to Mr. Sadaffel for playing for them. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the Goal, Bowl staff for all their help, to the volunteers who worked tirelessly to make this festival possible, to the sponsors. We would like to thank the media for their coverage. We have had some. And also TNT Events Photography, who have been very supportive. They have taken many photos and videos and we have put them up on our Facebook group, Music Festival South. So have a look at Music Festival South for lots of pictures of what has taken place in the festival. And I hope yours will be among them. If you do have photographs with you, with your certificates, please feel free to post them on that group. continue in San Fernando until Thursday night. But we have some changes. The vocals recital class has moved from Tuesday night to Thursday, and some of the Thursday classes have moved to Tuesday. Those are Tassa Drumming, Steel Pan Solo, Family Ensemble, and Musical Theater Solo Gents. So we do have a small change. Of course, every day is a special day down here at the music festival. Please invite people to come along so that they too can enjoy what has been presented. Championships will be held 
in San Fernando on Monday and Tuesday, the other championships will be held at Queen's Hall. So please come out and support. Podium. Another lovely class. It's lovely to hear youngsters playing this instrument um, and actually playing it so well. Neither of these pieces were particularly simple. Um, not that they should be, but for 12 and under, I thought they were quite challenging. The My Dog Has Fleas was rhythmically all over the place. Um, but of course, the skill of playing it accurately meant that the pulse had to be absolutely rigid and that the division of those beats within this pulse was, as I say, syncopated rests in, um, dotted around ties that had to be really really securely counted so those of you that have done very well are those that really showed me you had an inner pulse um, some of you took it at a slightly faster pace than others that also is taken into account obviously if you played it too fast and were unable to manage to play it then then that's a shame uh, if you played it too slow so that it lost its drive Equally, I have to take that into account. But if you found a good pulse for yourself um, that meant that you were accurate and it had character, and within that pulse you could still put your dynamics in and give it some, um, some moments whereby it was yours, then that was a good pulse to pick. So my dog had fleas, as I said, lots of rhythmic alterations and lots of dynamics too. It was so good to hear such varied dynamics in these young players. Some of them had really taken on board what the music says. The one rendition of Black Anaconda, it was nice to hear it. Um, similarly too, it starts at a piano level. It goes through all the dynamics really that you've got. It starts at piano, then the next entry is mezzo piano, then the next entry is mezzo forte, then the next entry is forte, then the next entry is fortissimo. You know, you've got them all there within your first sort of five or six entries. And then there's this huge descending chromatic scale, um, which was very, very well managed. Um, again, you know, it, it, you showed me that as far as notes go, 100% secure, very, very clear, and clarity was, was excellent. So, I had my work cut out because I thought there were a few performances here that really were um, pretty much on a par. Um, and I've awarded a third, second, and first place in the order of, we're in third place with 87 marks. You can hear how high the marks are. Uh, third place is Tony Ava Marie Lewis with her Black Anaconda. I thought this was really well executed. Um, you were true to the score with accurate readings of rhythm and of notes. Dynamics were really used effectively. I thought the chromatic scale descents were extremely well um, put over. The problem was the accompaniment and you. The ensemble wasn't exactly right. Not that it was a problem. It certainly didn't detract from your playing. But it, 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 there was a clear pulse and it, it needed to be absolutely bang on together. But as I say, your playing came across very, very well. And then in second place with 88 marks is Caleb. Um, he had a lovely, accurate account. Again, somebody who really explored his dynamics um, and was able to grade his piano and his forte really very, very clearly. Good player. I thought it had real secure musical understanding in your playing. And the winner for me today for a really up-tempo, this... this the rhythm just pours out of this player and very musical for her age, and that is Anaya. <laughs> Such a confident rhythmic player. Um, excellent dynamics. Occasionally I couldn't hear your piano. So that's one little thing to say, a couple of the players. Piano, it means quiet. It means play down and, you know, you've got your forte level and you've got your piano level. You have things a bit below that and a bit above that. 
but you've always got to gauge it relative to the hall that you're in, relative to the room that you're performing in. So the piano level maybe was fine at home or in a small music room or something, but really gauge it to the hall. But I just thought this had such rhythmic um, energy uh, and it was a very promising account from this young musician. Very well done. If you can come up and collect your awards, please. We're going to have a short afternoon and a good rest before resuming this evening. We planned our program based on the information that we are having 15 students in the next class, but we only have three of them. So we look forward to hearing them play. That is class JR D9, recorder solo, 13 to 15 years old. They are going to play the Allegro from Eine Kleine Nachtmusik by W.A. Mozart. Playing Allegro from Eine Kleine Nachtmusik. Jasmine Weiss, number five. Thank you, Jasmine. It's Haley Segobin.
Student number six. Thank you, Haley. This is number 11, Ariana Sadin.
Thank you, Ariana. We await adjudication of this class. Anna Kleiner Nacht music, um, Mozart. Have you heard it in any other arrangement? It's been arranged pretty much for every instrument under the sun and quartet, of course. So um, it's worth hearing it and horn and, I mean, every instrument going. I wonder if it's been done for steel pan. I bet it has. I bet it has. Um, it threw up some difficulties. Um, of course, the faster passages, coordinating tonguing and fingering, that's not easy. So, as, whenever you have fast moving notes, the ideal is to work on them slowly. Slowly and steadily, really teach the fingers where they need to go in a slow and confident fashion, and then slowly, slowly build it up. Slowly, slowly, notch by notch on the metronome, speed it up. And you'll, you'll be there in no time. Um, but, but there's no shortcut to it. It's not, oh, it's the fast bit. I'll just sort of fluff it each time. You really have to focus on those little bits. So there were semi-quaver passages. There were triplet semi-quavers as well that were quite difficult to maintain. Articulation as well. So I'm talking about the tonguing. When you slur notes together or you, you detach them or you just separate them with the tongue. Um, that, that was also marked on in your score and there was a lot of it. When you have passages of crotchets, so obviously you need to tongue each note. Do, 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 do. So be careful not to just do, 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 do. That to me is detached. If there's a gap between sounds, it's detached. So there were times where you had these crotchet passages, you could have aimed for a little bit more legato through them, more connection. But there was some good um, articulation on display. And for the most part, you all learnt your piece as well. The recorder is a small instrument. It is a small instrument. It will give you only as much as it can. So beware of overblowing. You just can't get more than it can give you. Similarly, you know, with any instrument really, um, if, you, if you strike a key too hard, it just deadens the sound you know, on the piano. If you strike on, on the steel pan, you can hear it just won't allow it. The, the instrument to resonate. It's a different sound, it's a sort of harsher sound. So aim for what you can get from your instrument. Push it, challenge it, but don't overdo it. So we had three players here and there's a first, second and third. I'm happy to talk about each of you. Where's Jasmine? Jasmine or Jasmine? Jasmine. You make a really attractive sound on this instrument. Right from your very first note, I thought, oh, this girl really understands the recorder. You worked hard, to, really hard, to incorporate all the articulation marked, all those different rhythms. Um, occasionally, the semi-quaver passages, they were a little bit unclear, so do work slowly on those, practice those. But I did think this was a secure performance and enjoyable too. And then we had Haley. Yes, steady pace, you took it at a slightly slower pace. It did allow you, generally, to achieve most of the faster passages. Your one where the crotchets were a little bit detached, go for them in a more uh, legato line, so there's smoothness to your phrasing. Um, not all notes were in place today. There was just occasionally times where, for example, the triplet semi-quaver rhythms weren't there. But do keep practicing, it's a super piece for you. Okay, and then we had Ariana. Yeah, you'd learnt this well, and the majority of your faster passages were there, certainly to begin with. Occasionally, the tonguing and the fingering lacked coordination, so you, you just lose it. You know, the, the tongue has to coordinate exactly with the finger, otherwise it sounds like you're slightly tripping over yourself. Um, do avoid slight overblowing down the instrument. Just, just, it can give you only as much as it can give you. It just deadens the sound, as I said, but I have some pleasing work here. So, um, in third place today is Haley. In second place is Ariana, and the winner of the class is Jasmine. Well done. Give our adjudicator, Ms. Belinda McHale, a great big round of applause for all her helpful remarks this afternoon. And I invite you all to come back this evening. You're going to have a lovely evening of music. We have Calypso Chorale, Tennis Solo, Ladies Quartet, Baritone Solo, 
Calypso Chorale with choreography and contemporary religious ladies. See you later.